So I, I'm curious about the the temperature and the movement of the of the hydrogen atoms. So this is a stupid question, likely, but I, the answer doesn't spring to mind. As you increase the average temperature of the plasma, what actually is happening to the atoms? Like, are they vibrating back and forth faster? And if they're vibrating back and forth faster, why don't they just go off in a single direction? Why is the mo motion, like that just, I can't understand that exactly, because you'd think that with a given momentum, they would go in a specific direction. Are they bumping into other atoms? Is that the issue? Yeah, so, right, so now I have to pull up a whole other level about what, what the medium of the fuel is. And it's because, so the temperatures involved always in fusion exceed tens of millions of degrees. So it turns out that any matter, when you increase it up to around five or 10,000 degrees Celsius, it turns into a different phase of matter. So you cannot, you can no longer think of it as atoms in a lattice as you do in solids or atoms flo floating, you know, basically a fluid like water or even, even the atoms in this air bumping into each other. It turns into a completely different phase of matter. This is called a plasma. Uh, and plasmas have unique properties because what they're doing is disintegrating the atom. And atoms are made up of the simplest one is hydrogen. Is there there's a uh, there, there's a positive charge nucleus? In the, in the case of simple hydrogen, it's just a single proton. And things like deuterium, which is the heavy form of of hydrogen, there's a proton and a neutron that are held together. And then there's a single electron, a negatively charged electron around it. So all all the matter that we always deal with on Earth, solid, liquid, a gas, are all in the phase of they're all stable atoms that hold them that themselves. They are holding themselves together through the uh, through the atomic forces which are in there, not, not nuclear forces, which is interesting. Atomic forces which which are in there. Once you get up above five or ten thousand degrees, those temperatures are so high they start breaking those bonds, and basically what happens is that there's enough energy that on average, the electrons are all pulled away from their partner that they had here. So the distinguishing feature mm. of a plasma is that, in fact, they're not little atoms like wiggling around like this. They're actually freely going around particles that all have electric charge. And particularly when you reach temperatures required for fusion, everything has a charge in it uh, as well, too. The reason that this is... Again, so, but by the way, plasma is a discipline in and of itself. My, you know, I mm -hmm. actually work at a place called the Plasma Science and Fusion Center. Plasma is the central medium that you use to make fusion happen. So, like, what is an example of that? Well, it's the sun. The sun is not actually a ball. We think of the sun as a ball. Oh, it's a ball of maybe gas or liquid or something. Mm -hmm. No, it's plasma because <laughs> everything is above 5,000 degrees in the sun. So, this gets a little bit harder to say. So what does this mean about what, well, that it's a plasma? Like, why is it special? Why is it difficult to think about? This does go into your question, but mm -hmm. how on earth do you actually mm, tame this, right? Well, what happens in, from this, it goes back to this whole pushing against each other through, um, through the, through the electromagnetic forces and particularly the fact that they've got charges now. Remember, I told you before when they, when, when the hydrogen protons come together, they, they don't want to come together too mm -hmm, close because mm -hmm. they get repulsed from each other. That's actually a force that acts not when the particles physically touch one another, but it's always present because they're interacting through their charges. Mm -hmm. So particles out here, like they can be zipping by each other like this, but actually impact each other because they get to interact with each other through the through a basic force of nature, which is again the the electrostatic force. And it turns out, well, it's sort of intuitively almost, and this is why it's, by the way, plasmas are not intuitive because the, the physics that dictates them is, is action at a distance. And therefore they have a really pretty wild set of collective behaviors that has been, a, a, you know, has been a source of study in, it's an entire uh, discipline of physics, plasma physics that has been studied for over a hundred years to sort of understand this medium. But in the end, one of the ways we do describe it is you can almost think of like a, a, a like a gas, but rather the particles have charge, and so they're bouncing off each other without actually physically touching into each other, which mm -hmm. gives them complex mm -hmm. sets of behavior. So in the end, in order to contain this, like in the sun, that's happening in the sun. 
is that this means that there's sort of randomized motion actually for any individual particle. Right. As an ensemble, they actually have they have predictive ways through statistics, statistical mechanical descriptions that allow us, like we do in gases and solids and others, that we can sort of describe this in terms of a thermodynamic point of view, even though it's in this crazy plasma state. 